But finding their larva, they really like being close to where there's air, uh, is another habitat to look at. The boatmen will be out there, and we'll, we'll find some things uh, on the, uh, the ground. We'll take some closer looks and some photos uh, coming up. Where we look at, we start looking at the near shore habitat a little bit more closely as naturalists. Okay, we, you know, we reckon, and you already had a nice uh, uh, questions on the different types of plants, so you're aware of these habitats. But the bugs, uh, mainly insects here, uh, is what we're looking at, um, are, uh, well, crustaceans, are, are in different habitats. Some are just simply in the mud, some, some kind of deep, but the surface muds are really full of nutrients and they can get oxygen. Um, some of them will emerge. I, uh, I um, uh, stole this fight from Maria, so she gets all credit for this. Um, uh, and then uh, in the water column is another habitat. We'll explore that more when we go out in the boat. Um, on the surfaces of, of plants, don't forget that. Things that we call epiphytes. Um, algae grow very nicely here because they're, they're, they're in a nice area to keep and control the amount of light they're getting, the amount of, of gases that they need, the amount of nutrients. And so the, the animals figure this out really fast. That's a good place to get a consistent um, uh, nutrients and so forth. So explore uh, um, leaf surfaces. Um, near shore uh, can be uh, a very nice place. First off, uh, a lot of uh, the insects like to crawl up and then dry off and, and take off, but also uh, a very productive overlap. Anytime you have an edge, you have, you have uh, more species diverse. You look for edges when you're looking for diversity uh, in any habitat. Okay. Um, of course, scientists classify everything, and there's all kinds of names for everything. We start to see, you know, we're probably in this area uh, as naturalists. We, we see some things we, have, we know, dragonflies, mayflies, and so forth. We won't be going over here uh, today, but I just want you to realize that you spent a lifetime looking at these things. Let's look at pictures instead. So, uh, <laughs> Yay, Mike. <laughs> well, of course, we can classify anything. But, okay, so let's look at body forms. These are mayflies. You know, in the summer, and even now, yeah. you know, maybe at night, you look up at the, at the uh, street lights, and you see all these bugs going around. A lot of times, those are mayflies when they're emerging. They really like to go to light. So here's an adult. Okay, and what do we see? Well, we, we see a, a, a thin body type. Uh, if you count the legs, of course, it's an insect, eye parts. But they hold their wings over the top. You know, we'll see the damsel fly later doing it, but they're more uh, lateral. Okay, this is um, uh, a mayfly larva, and um, again, we see, well, we can tell it. it's a um, six legs, an insect, head, thorax, abdomen, okay? These three filaments at the back are pretty good to look for for mayflies. In most cases, that's a good thing to look at. What are these fuzzy things hanging off its, its uh, abdomen? Gills. Oh, you guys are good, great. Okay, next, uh, caddisflies. Um, sometimes we think of these as being like little old, you know, little tiny tents that had three uh, you know, two sides and then the bottom, but uh, they, they call them trichoptera because the wings sit and make kind of a, a, a triangle that way, folding them over their back. Huh? Yeah. Talking to myself. The other thing is, 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 is that they uh, allow them to make houses. And it's kind of like the, um, the three little pigs, you know, some make them out of, out of sticks, some make them out of little stones. Uh, I forget about, I get what was it, straws. So, some make it out of different, different types of things. All their houses are, are unique. And we, we have a good chance of finding these. In the fall, we find a lot of stuff. So it's a good time to go hunting. We almost always uh, get our limit, okay? Um, the um, uh, dragonflies, we, we know these guys. They're, 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 they're so cool. They, they come up, they fly. Some things you might not know, and maybe you do, but um, um, they have an extendable jaw. So um, when they're flying, they can extend the jaw grab like an insect, bring it back. Oh, they, and they have the same thing with our larva, but they, they, we'll, we'll show you the, the, the jaw. You know, we just you have to do the dentist and open up, you know. So. <laughs> what is a helper mite? Ah, a helper mite is um, uh, an aquatic insect. Um, the, um, uh, they aren't the alder flies when they grow up? Dobson flies. Dobson and alder flies. Yeah, they must have been the strange. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I find people helper looking for them. Helper mites. Helper mites. Yeah, make, make a lot right? Yeah, yeah, yeah and they're, they are mostly flowing water insects. So yeah. 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 Yeah.
But the, the, the dragonflies are, are nice. Um, the, the, the wings go off to the side. We all recognize that. What they, they found out more recently is that when they come out of their larval form, they actually have a, a hydraulic system. So, you know, instead of cranking out the, the, the wings for a helicopter, they pump them out and dry them. And the biomechanics behind them are, are being uh, better understood all the time. They're fantastic organisms. Damsel flies, there's the wings over the back. When we look in the water, here's a, a type of uh, dragonfly larva. Um, this one will have the kind of the extendable jaw model, okay? Um, eyes, legs. Uh, this one can also compress its abdomen and kind of have a little jet propulsion and, and move around. Get, you know, get out of the way when you don't want to be eaten, but these guys like to eat other things. Uh, damselfly, slender body, yeah, okay, we also see the three filaments, but a little bit longer body type than we saw in the mayfly. It just takes a little getting used to the uh, differences in those two, um, and we'll, we'll help you with that. Beetles are easy to see uh, in the adult form. I think we've all seen beetles. Um, uh, uh, great naturalists uh, in the past said, why did God love the beetles so much? He made so many different kinds. Um, but in, in the water, they look a little bit different. Um, you know, you got the slender body shape, not really that filamentous thing, a little bit bigger head capsule in this species, and this one seems to have like multiple appendages, not all of them, of course, used for, for locomotion. So we, we see a real different type of body type in beetles. Uh, look for the adults and, and the uh, uh, larvae today. You should be able to come up with some. Um, here's uh, one we all recognize, right? Uh, uh, these are black flies uh, down here, and they kind of look like little wormy kind of things. So I'm going to move us to something we're a little bit more used to. Uh, mosquitoes here getting a, a, a nice um, protein meal off of somebody. <laughs> this is a great picture of, of, of I, you know, I, uh, we didn't take that, I took this off the web. Um, but the um, mosquitoes here, you know, why, why are we worried about mosquitoes being in tires with water in them and staying in you know, their place, because the water is stagnant. And they like that because surface water to us, we dive through it. We, we, you know, it's not a big deal, but we know things live on it, and mosquitoes can attach to it. So now we have, well, we have a place where we can get, you know, if there's allergy available, we can have a place that's high in oxygen. And if it's stagnant, I won't get knocked out of it. And mosquitoes take advantage of those things. So we have to think like the organisms think for to understand their adaptations. Here's the midge again, and I'm just going to uh, draw your attention to the, uh, the larval form. A little bit more of a head capsule, okay, um, the uh, uh, leg appendages here. In the back, um, usually something to hang on to the little house uh, is part of that. This one, uh, you probably uh, had people say, oh, I, I saw some blood worms today, or I found some blood worms, or I go fishing with blood worms. In a way, it's true and it's false. They're not worms, because uh, they're you know, the segmentation and, and being an uh, uh, insect and everything. But the, the blood part is true. That, that is a hemoglobin. It's not exactly like your hemoglobin. They, they know the type of it. But it does a similar function. Hemoglobin uh, in, in your blood helps to carry oxygen, as we know, to every, every corpuscle, every cell in our body has to be oxygenated that, that's alive and functioning. Um, same thing with these guys. They go down in the mud. The more you go down in the mud, the less oxygen you have. Trying to get every little molecule of oxygen, they need help. So they, they've adapted uh, hemoglobin. They help them with uh, staying alive as an oxygen type of animal. Oh, these guys are real fun. Uh, the boatmen, we'll go find some of these. Um, head is here, abdomen, uh, wing case. But what we have in, 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 in their six of, um, appendages, the front two are often elongated and just like paddles, like those, those guys, like you know the guys at Yale are always going up and down the river. Uh, you know, Lee, hell, come on, they're they're, they're uh, big thing. They, they can roll really really fast like this. Okay, moving a little bit uh, from insects. So you know uh, a lot of people are happy to know that we have jellyfish in fresh water, but they're not really big man of wars. You won't get stung and go paralyzed and drown or anything. They're about you know maybe a centimeter or two big, um, and when they're 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 hydra. Uh, and, and so, but they, they do have nematocysts, they, they do little tiny stings, but nothing that you would ever feel. Um, but, but really neat, and this time of year, um, did we find any the other day, Logan? I know we're coming from. Good time of year to find them, though. Uh, so we're going to go hike on them today, also. What's that? This is the art. Yeah, you're going to find them today, the I'm right, that's why they're here. Okay, let's move on to. So you got some idea. I, now, 
I just went over a real overview of the, the most common things you'll probably find in, in the shoreline stuff. Maria and Logan are, are, are excellent in this. This is, this is what, what they've done. Um, I look a little bit more in even the, the, the smaller things, but um, and we're not going to cover the, the, the water um, uh, really quickly, I guess. So um, we're going to go out in the boat and get some water samples. And these things are smaller. So all those bugs I showed you, a lot of them you can see, some that are kind of hard to see, but we have magnification to help us with all that thing. When we get into the small things, the bacteria, the flagellates, the uh, little microcrustaceans, and even the phytoplankton, the reason we don't love them as much, I think, is because we don't see them, but once we see them, we go, wow, really cool stuff, and we're going to spend a little bit of time on that. Now, as a geeky scientist, I put this on a ruler, and we're like, that's going to really help us understand the size. <laughs> I think another way of looking at it is to ask the first lady to help us, okay? And what I was thinking is that if you ask the first lady of rock and roll, Lady Gaga, one of, make about, um, one of her hairs. Now, who here has hair, or had hair at least? Yeah. <laughs> okay, everybody. Okay, so if you feel a hair, and if you don't have one, go uh, ask your neighbor, maybe. And, um, if you feel the width of it, that's your ruler for, for trying to think of the size of these things. Not the length of your hair, the width of it. So you take the, oh wow, that's, that's pretty small. So if I look at the width of a hair, a Lady Gaga's hair in this case, yeah, was it a 0.07? 0.07, no. Yeah, I mean, you can, if you don't trust me, we can go measure that. I, I'm, just, I'm, not, I'm not above empirical science. Um, but if we have a hair width, the bacteria are still small. And just so you know, there's more bacteria in and on you than there's cells of you. There's about 100 trillion bacteria right now crawling around inside of you. Ooh, that's good for the morning, isn't it? Um, yeah. the, 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 the little things that, that are, are, are little flashes and ciliates, we'll show you some ciliates today, they're about that width. So we need a microscope to see that. Yeah, I know I can feel the width of my hair, but I really can't get a good feel for you know, that's still pretty small for me to see, okay. When we start looking at zooplankton in comparison, they come in kind of like B-52s compared to the other ones because they're, they're, they're really huge in retrospective to uh, what we've been looking at. So let's look at a few things on um, my way out here. Um, tiny animals, crustaceans. I, I have the, the students uh, determine uh, because these are small shrimp, how many shrimp dinners are, are out in, in Lake Thompson? <laughs> well, the Japanese came, they calculated the amount of zooplankton, and they found out that it was the equivalent of, of seven um, African elephants in weight. So wow. they're small, but I'm just trying to say that kind of biomass yeah. is really, really important. I mean, we all like, I'm not going like shrimp, it's a great way to get protein. So we see this type of, of, of um, of a body type, kind of a bean with a head on it, okay, with these fun, funny looking uh, appendages. Those, and here we, we lose the, the nice easy uh, things to This isn't a fox, this isn't here, we have to say Clodosterin, okay, and, 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 and Daphnia. There, there are no, it's not like Jim and Mary, okay, we don't have that. Cyclops, a type of copepod, these are more torpedo shaped. And they, they have these antenna uh, on them. We'll, we'll find a lot of these, and we'll find a lot of their young, which kind of look like little starry uh, kind of uh, uh, body types. Okay, ciliates are smaller. A lot of us have learned about the paramecium, you know, on uh, that. When we get looking in the water, the diversity of ciliates, although they're small, is really uh, diverse. And this is what I mean by pattern and symmetry. This looks like, like stuff out of, you know, H.G. Wells or something, you know, something like that that's very imaginative, and yet well, we'll have a, a video to show you of Stenter and some of these other ciliates that, that are taking on little particles like bacteria and algae and just, just filtering this in. And that's what they do all day. They don't watch TV, they don't, re they don't watch reruns of Friends, they're just out there eating that stuff. Um, we have other body types. The, the rotifers will be very common. Um, Brachiotis will probably make an appearance today for sure. Um, and then we don't want to, to turn our heads to the plants. Really important. And again, I want to show you this pattern, this symmetry, this beautiful net that hydrodictin can make. Okay? This, this floating jelly ball, I mean, a very, very small ball, that's Volvox. It kind of just floats <coughs> through the water like, you know, something in 2001, a space odyssey. Very beautiful kind of thing. And here, spiral type of of, of chloroplast and spiro, spirogyra, that we usually go, when you go down to the dock, you're like, oh, look at all the weeds and the slime. Instead of pulling it apart, it's like, wow, there's 
kind of like a, a real neat beauty in that, I, I think. But either way, it's diversity uh, nonetheless. We can find um, uh, algae whose um, walls are actually made of glass or silica. These are diatoms. And they have to have little bitty holes in there so you know, air and nutrients can get in and out. But we'll find things that look like um, that kind of pendy look and then some of the circular types of things today also. But now, you're going to have to look more carefully. The big bugs, oh, I find the bug. Okay, that's really easy. Instead of these guys, you got to kind of go hunting around a little bit. So um, we'll be helping with that. Okay. So, you know, we've talked about the plankton, the zooplankton. We know about the big food web. We know that the small food web feeds into that and has a lot to do with the nutrients and things that Maria were talking about. These are, this is the nexus of life. When things die, they're recycled here and that, that energy moves through and, and continues life um, uh, after it. And it's important to, to, to look at those. In, in passing, in the end, Bacteria, we'll find these out here. This is Anabina, uh, a nice I actually took this picture, it's okay. Um, but they, they have specialized cells to grab nitrogen out of, out of the um, uh, air, uh, something we, we learn about. This, this bacteria changed Thompson Lake. Okay, in 2006, 2007, Thompson Lake was as, as clear as clear could be. And shortly after, in the summer, all of a sudden, this stuff showed up. It looked like someone had taken their their, their uh, grass clippings and threw them in the, in the water. And, and what is that stuff? It turns out to be aphanazomenon. Yes, something you, you say every day, right? Um, <laughs> these are two colonies of bacteria, and they're able to take... Uh, Thompson Lake was nitrogen limiting, almost unheard of in Illinois, right? Takes nitrogen out of the air, brings it to the water, and changes the whole community. Mm. Over the years, and this is where Logan comes in, it actually shifted the whole community. It was that big. Okay. I mean, cyanobacteria brought oxygen to, to, to Earth two billion years ago. They're used to changing things in big ways. So uh, for here, they changed our, our nutrients. And when they died, they made this kind of beautiful uh, <laughs> pigment thing because yeah. we have the blue-green pigments in there. Again, as naturalists, you might walk around, what is that stuff? And then you get an idea what that is. Do I do plants? Okay. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, let's think of plants. I, when the time I'll, comes nothing, you can just... I'll be... I'll be, I'll be. <laughs> okay, as you walk around the shoreline, look around, you'll see most of these, okay? Now, um, Arrowhead's really easy. Sagittarius um, kind of has that, you know, that um, uh, invagination here, and then that kind of, you know, Arrowhead uh, part to it. Um, it, it will be emerging, uh, here are the, the flowers, I, I don't have time to go through a, a lot of it, but you'll see it today, and, and I'm sure Maria uh, on the shoreline will, will, will point out uh, uh, some of these as, as we go. Um, coontail is, is very common. I, I, I love looking at coontail because you, you have that radiant uh, symmetry from that central stem. Okay, and they're going to be uh, submerged, they'll, they'll come to the top, and a lot of them say, oh, these are the weeds. But they're real important. When you look at Thompson, though, look at how far the, the weed line actually goes. For a lake that's basically flat bottom at about um, uh, 9 to 10 feet, you still see that the weeds stop in one area, and that's something you should, should think about a little bit. Um, why isn't Thompson Lake a complete weed bed? Very interesting out there. Okay, um, we have Merophyllum, okay, water milfoil, and um, basically the... Um, and when you look at the small uh, radiation of, of, of the leaves, you have more um, branching here. Here you have the small leaves coming off at, at one uh, area on, on, on the, the subleaf there, and that's the thing to look at uh, for, for those. Um, this one, uh, I love smartweed. Um, uh, reminds me of my, my great students. Um, the uh, smartweed is, is, is a polygonum. I mean, you, you do find this in your gardens and stuff. It's in that family. But you'll see the, the, pink, the pink effervescence with this kind of simple leaf uh, coming off that. Uh, a little bit closer look. Oh, no, that's, that's part of the game. Um, pondweed, you'll see these uh, the leaves floating on the top of it. Uh, right by the dock, you'll see like, most of these things uh, today. Um, cattail, I don't know, people... I find people don't like cattails as much as I do. I love cattails. Um, they, they, uh, one thing you might not, uh, you, you, you all know what they are. One thing you might not know about cattails is that their, their uh, stems 
have canals in them. It's called canicula. They actually will take oxygen from, from the uh, air and move it down to the roots and oxygenate the, the wetland soil and then pump out methane and other things. So they have a whole different ecosystem around their, their roots. And I don't know, some people eat the roots and do all that kind of cool stuff also. But you know, they actually actually go oxygen pumps in an area that's really without oxygen. Very neat adaptation. Okay, uh, American lotus, love these things. Okay, yeah. big, big, wax, they kind of look like waxy leaves, but they're, they're hydrophobic. You know, put water on them, they just kind of bead on there. They got the, the big uh, um, um, blooms on them, and then you know, they tip over, pop off their, uh, just float around, pop up their, their seeds. There's the, um, those, um, those out there, maybe we can get close to one of those if we have time in the boat. Um, here's our Eurasian metafoil, okay. Um, we, we don't see the life in exotics and invasives, although if you get down to it, most of us are. Um, the, um, water the water millifoil, um, uh, again, is in that, that millifoil kind of radiation uh, uh, of leaves there. Watercress, um, loose stripe, uh, apparently you, you've learned about already. Um, curly pondweed, okay, uh, looks like a salad I had last night. Okay, and then um, uh, water hyacinth. And um, and hydrilla. Uh, okay, uh, that, that's. It. I know that was a real uh, run through a, of the world, but so the, take some of those images with you as you start looking around. I want you to observe. We're going to give you a few more facts. We can't cover everything, but I hear a lot of great questions coming out. So you know, ask us, and we'll kind of show you around and continue the tour uh, through the rest of the day. So back to Jason. Okay, we've got about...